Welcome everybody to the Doe Show. Happy Thursday. If um, you are a regular watcher of the show, keep in mind, uh, tomorrow I will be out of the office. So there uh, will be no closing beat tomorrow, no update on the stock market. Uh, so we'll be back on Monday. I'll be traveling to San Antonio. If you happen to be one of our customers and you have a question and you're in San Antonio, maybe we can help you there. But I will be out of the office tomorrow. So if you don't hear from me, you'll know why. Uh, well, hey, look, today we're here to talk about your credit score and your credit reports more importantly that's actually what we want to focus on we want to help you get your dough straight the purpose of the dough show is to just teach you anything about money anything that's a current event that has to do with your money and of course any tips and tricks that we can give you that we've helped along the way learning from our customers or helping them along the way so today we're going to focus more on the credit report and if you don't know who i am i'm dustin tibbetts a financial advisor with jazz wealth we are the financial advisor for the little guy, right? I mean, if you have a lot of money, we'll still work with you, but you know, we we'll wanna work with the people that are either just getting started, are within 10 years, uh, or have more than 10 years left to retirement, or somewhere in that range, and they need the advice. They need the help, they need someone to get them there. They're tired of Googling for hours to try to find information. They want an advisor that actually manages portfolios and is also a fiduciary, so feel free to check us out at Jazz Wealth. That's all I have to say about that. I wanna get this done today because I'm like in full vacation mode already. Here's the thing, so you guys know this, uh, you've got three credit reporting agencies. Now watch how I use the words here because this could uh, confuse you a little bit. I almost did it, I almost wrote and talked at the same time. Uh, TransUnion and of course Equifax, we all know them. By the way, whatever happened to the data breach? Remember that Equifax law, uh, was hacked and uh, about 150 million accounts were taken from, or uh, information was stolen? So here we go. You got three credit reporting agencies. Now what happens is there are, there are two parts to your credit. You have your credit report, which each one of these guys holds, and then you have your credit score. Right? So at Experian, they have a report on you doesn't include your score, they have a credit report. And it just, your history, it's your whole life all in this uh, report. TransUnion has a report, Equifax has a report. Now each one of them have their own scores and that used to be sort of complicated. Uh, it's been much more simplified these days, but uh, what we're not talking about today is your score, right? So your, um, when you're looking back uh, on either your credit report or your credit score, these are the details. Right, so this is just all the details about what you've done, uh, where you've moved to, what credit you've opened, what credit you've closed, what's been behind, did you make any late payments? This is like pages and pages and pages, the older you get, uh, of all the details. Even past credit cards you had that you canceled or closed or whatever, all in there. If you got married, maybe your name changed. Now over here, this is just a snapshot, right? This is, well, you, you guys pretty much know what a credit score is. This is a snapshot of how you handle your credit. So this tells you all the details and everything that's happened over here is just one number, well, your FICO score is just one number that lets everybody know where we're at on the same playing field. So if it's a 750, we know that you do pretty good at handling your credit. If it's like a 510, we know you've got some work to do, right? So you're, you're working on it little by little. Now this is the most important part of your adult financial life. So you better understand at least the basics of this um, or, you know, you're, you know, it's going to cost you a lot of money because the worse off this credit score is or if there are errors in this credit report, it's going to hurt your score, which is going to end up making you pay more. Banks are going to charge you more, of course. You get the basic picture on there. That's not, we're, we're not really doing a class today on how it all works. What I want to do is go over what to do if you find that there's an error. Now the first thing you're going to do is end up checking your credit report. So Experian again has a report, TransUnion and Equifax. So if you're not checking your report and you're wondering why your credit score is so low, that may be the thing. Now these days, um, who does it? I saw a commercial for it. Maybe it was Discover uh, credit cards where they say they put the uh, credit score on your statement now. That's great, but it doesn't tell you what's in the report. So here's the first thing. One in five people have found an error on their credit report. One in five, right? So chances are it's either you, your wife, 
your brother, right? Somebody in the mix probably has an error. Now, I think if more people checked their credit reports, that that number would actually be a, a little bit higher, to be honest. So who was it that said that? Uh, the Federal Trade Commission said one in five people find errors on their credit uh, reports. Uh, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau said that they get 100,000 reports of errors a month. And that, that number was actually as of last year, so maybe it's increased a little bit. So here's the thing. How do you know if there's an error? How do you check your credit report? Here's what you're going to do. You've got these three uh, credit reporting agencies. Sometime between January and March, you're going to go to Experian. Well, hold on a second. You're going to check your Experian credit report, right? Sometime in the next quarter, darn it, you're going to go to TransUnion, and sometime in the next quarter, third quarter, right, you're going to go to Equifax, right? First quarter, second quarter, third quarter. Now, in the fourth quarter, you get to take time off. Look, it's Thanksgiving, it's uh, Halloween, right? Is it Halloween? You got uh, Christmas and everything going on. Leave it alone. You're going to go to annualcreditreport.com and you are going to check one report every three months. Set an alert on your phone. Send a, a, one of those cool things where it automatically sends you an email, right, when you uh, need to do something. But you're going to go to annualcreditreport.com. It's not like a promotion or anything. That is a government mandated website where these three guys were forced to put all the information on one website to allow customers to get one free credit report uh, a year. Well, so a total of three. Now you can sp space this out a little bit. You don't have to, you know, you can go, you know, third quarter, fourth quarter if you want, but you got to check, right? Because now, especially now, credit is moving at a much faster rate. The, the choices that you make that have to do with your credit report are moving much faster than they used to. Not only that, somebody gets hacked like every other day, whether it's Home Depot or Target. You guys saw all that. Equifax, you guys know the drill with that. So annualcreditreport.com, uh, it's, it's free. You don't have to pay anything, and it's run by the government or mandated by the government. These three guys run it. Um, and so that's what you're going to look for. Now, I made a list. When you do get your credit report, what on earth are you looking for? Because if you've never pulled your credit report yet, when you do, you're going to be overwhelmed at what's in there, especially if you're a little older. If you're in your early 20s, maybe not so much. But um, as you get a little bit older, you're going to be really shocked how many pages there are, all kinds of nonsense, tips, tricks, and tools that they put in there. Uh, it's incredible. So I made a little list of things I want you to look for. Number one, you're looking for late payments that are not yours. It's either late payments that you did not make or uh, payments that were reported as late that you did you weren't late on, right? That you did. Uh, number two, false judgments. This is a big one, guys. Ah, I can't write. With, I, I wish I could talk and write. Like, what's my? I was a drummer. I was a drummer all my life, and I can't write and talk at the same time. It, it hurts me. Um, Okay, false judgments. This was a big one last year. What was happening here, it's not that someone, ha it's not that you have a judgment against you, it's that somebody else with a similar name had a judgment against you. And prior to either last year or the year before, they were only matching names and I believe your birth year. So the credit reporting agencies were getting this really, really wrong. Now with the new rules, they're matching social security numbers, birth dates, and first and last name, and maiden names as well. So false judgments may not be such a, uh, much of an issue anymore, but if you had them from a year ago or two years ago, you have to actually get that fixed. So uh, that's a big one. Please take a moment to look for that. Um, creditors that are reporting charge-offs in accounts that either you do not own or that is not the case, right? Keep in mind, it's not always these guys' fault. Sometimes the credit card companies make a similar mistake. That's very rare, but sometimes they make a mistake. Charge offs that are not yours or accounts that are in default that are not yours. Again, it's probably just that your name is somewhere close. Um, I'll tell you a really, really, really quick story. My good friend, he, <laughs> poor guy, his name is actually Joseph Smith. Do you know how many errors we found on his credit report? The poor guy's name is Joseph Smith. I mean, what else could be worse than that? Thanks, Mom, right? Uh, number four, accounts you don't recognize. Not, 
not recognized. <laughs> I'm just going to say them. I'm not going to write anymore. Uh, accounts you don't recognize. Of course, that's a very common one. It's an easy one to fix. No problem at all. Number five, addresses that are not yours. Um, it could be that the old addresses were messed up. It could be a whole number of different things, but if you see an address on there that's not yours, that might be the first hint that somebody is trying to use your credit uh, to uh, buy something or open up a line of credit. So be careful with that one as well. That's actually in one category. So when you scroll down, you'll see all your addresses or if you print it out, you'll see all your addresses. You can real quickly just look at that one. And number six is old names that you've never used, uh, especially if you've been married once or twice or three times. <laughs> Something you want to check. Now look, we're going to, um, uh, here's what I'm going to do. If you go in the description of this video, here's what you do. You have to uh, write to each one of these agencies. So if you pull your Experian and you find that something's wrong, you can go online or you can send them a physical letter if it's something that you want to be able to, to track, like if, if you're one of those people. Um, so you can mail them in. Down below in the description, I put the address that you have to send the letter to. And I also put a link to the Federal Trade Commission's uh, sample letter. Real simple, just a sample letter. You fill in your information, the dispute that you have, and where you mail it to. I put the addresses for each one of you there. I also put the online link because I promise you, you guys are going to go check your credit report and some of you are going to find errors. So you also have the online link. So if you go to TransUnion, you end up checking your credit report for some reason, you find an error, you'll see the link on our description down below where to uh, file the online dispute. I looked at all three of these to see what they, um, what they say as far as the disputes. Um, all of them say it takes about 30 days on average. You will get a written report whether you apply online, uh, whether you file your dispute online or you send in a paper um, letter like the sample that we have down below. You will get a written report of the results. Um, if they do uh, change anything or they do agree with you, then you get a new free credit report for your records to show, each one of them will give you a new free credit report for your records so that you have proof going forward if you need to prove that um, that was an error and that you did fix it. So we did a lot of homework for this video, but in particular, it's all in the description uh, as far as all the links and everything. So please check your credit report. Why do I make these videos? Aren't you a financial advisor? What are you talking about credit for, Dustin? What's going on? I'm a big believer that you can only be a great investor if you get your dough straight. If you are winging it with your finances, you are going to wing it with your investments and you're gonna be one of those guys or girls that calls me and says, I'm a little short on dough this month. I need to take money out of my IRA. And when you do that, it's gonna cost you 30%. That's a stupid tax right there. So I believe in let's teach people how to do it. Let's be proactive with everything. Whatever I can share with you that I know or have done research on, then I'm gonna share it with you if it helps you get your dough straight because uh, it's just gonna make you that much better of an investor. I can promise you that that's what happens. Uh, and I'm not allowed to promise very much in this business. So. Um, I hope that helps. Look, if I helped you in some way today and you're watching for the first time, hit the subscribe button with the little alert bell down below. Feel free to check us out at jazzwealth.com. There's a the little pop-up on the screen there. Um, we manage our own portfolios. Solid, right? We don't sell to other companies. We don't in, uh, get kickbacks from anybody. We handle it all ourselves here. We take care of you at Jazz Wealth. I appreciate you guys watching. Mr. Connie Guzman, I'm sorry, Connie Guzman says I had a very good credit in the mid-700s. They sent my app to several banks. That made my credit go down a lot. It, uh, well, so it depends on how you did it, Connie. Um, you have the ability now, almost, I think it launches here after the end of the summer, you have the ability or a window of 45 days to shop around for credit. Right now I think it's 30 days. Everybody thinks it's two weeks, but it's actually 30 days. So you get to shop around without hurting your credit. And you should know that Checking your credit does not lower your score. I'm gonna get some pushback on this one now like from comments here, but uh, when you check your credit, that doesn't hurt your score. If you happen to check your credit to buy a car, then you went over to the, I don't know, cell phone company and they checked your credit, and then you went to go buy a house and you did all of that in a short amount of window, that's what lowers your credit score. If you said, I'm going to buy a car, so I'm gonna check my credit at the dealership, or they're gonna check it, and then I'm gonna to go to the bank and they're gonna check it and then I'm gonna to go to a bigger bank and then I'm gonna to go to an online bank. That will not hurt your credit score. Four points, it's not seven. Four points is the most that it can hurt it. So I'd be curious, uh, either, either that was a long time ago that that happened um, 
or maybe you were shopping for multiple things. So uh, that's something I would look into because that, that should not affect your score. There is nowhere, that is a myth. I did a whole video on myths, credit score myths, and I got my information uh, from, directly from the credit agency. So uh, I would check that. How accurate is Credit Karma? They're just going based on information and assumptions that they're using from third-party providers. These companies, did you ever wonder how Equifax and Experian and TransUnion make money, AJ? They don't, you don't pay them, right? And they have these massive buildings, they're publicly traded, so how they make money is by selling that data to people like Credit Karma. They sell them assumptions, they sell them variables that allow them to assume that your credit score is within a certain little range. And uh, nowadays, I wouldn't be surprised if they just sold them the actual credit score. So uh, as far as accuracy, I would say it is probably pretty accurate to your FICO score, not the individual reporting agency scores, but to your FICO score. Great. All right. That's all I have for you. Have a great day. We'll see you back here at five o'clock for the closing beat stock market update. Looks like the market's a little lower today. What are we going to talk about? See you then. Why should you choose Jazzwealth as your retirement or long-term investing service? Our portfolios are managed by us, not some faceless mutual fund manager. Our private classes will teach you everything about investing and getting your dough straight. Best of all, our fiduciary standard means your best interest comes before ours.